Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophistic Cakes by Mary. For this tutorial, I wanted to show you how I made this modern fondant ruffle cake that featured some edible crinoline and some rice paper petals. I also decorated with some dragees just to pair to your up. So if this sounds interesting, stick around. So I'm gonna show you what I feel is the best way to make your fondant ruffles. First, we're going to take some regular fondant. This was Wilton, I believe, and I'm mixing some Tylos powder in it. The reason for that is the Wilton fondant itself tends to dry a little faster than other brands that I've used, which is going to benefit us in this design. And I added some Tylos to make it firm up even a little faster. Because if you want those fondant ruffles to hold their shape, you're going to want them, you're going to need them to be able to, to firm up quicker. So I'm just going ahead and I'm rolling this out. And for this one, I wanted to add a texture to it with wafer paper. So I didn't roll it as thin as I'm rolling out these white sections. I um, left that about a quarter of an inch thick because you'll see uh, the technique I'm gonna do. Um, I needed to have some thickness that I had some flexibility in thinning it out even more. And the reason I'm rolling this out ahead of that out ahead of time is because I want it to sit out and firm up for a little while while I was doing the rest of the steps of this cake. So just go ahead and set those aside. I did three different different um, sheets of fondant and I set them aside while I was working with the rest of the cakes. And what I'm doing here is I just rolled out two rolls of, uh, of fondant, two balls of fondant to um, put on the top of this two tier cake. Now I'm just using a little shortening to get the fondant to stick to the top. Now don't worry about putting shortening on it. Fondant has shortening worked into it already. And all that does is get it to stick to the, um, the ganache. And it would work for buttercream or a meringue as well. It's gonna work, it's going to just incorporate into the rest of the fondant, it's such a little amount. But you can use water, you can use simple syrup if you prefer, it's up, totally up to you. And then I just went ahead and I cut off the excess around each of these tops. And then just use a sharp knife. That is just a clay cutting tool that I like to use. And um, cutting that excess flush with the side of the cake. Now these were pre-crumb coated cakes with chocolate ganache. I will try to remember to put a link on here on a cake that I show how I assembled the cake. And then just go ahead and set those in your refrigerator. They were chilled to begin with, but set them back in the refrigerator while you work on the rest here. And now I am working on adding that texture to these pale pink fondant. Now I went with pink on this because I had some extra fondant. I don't like to waste. So I went ahead and added some kind of blushy color in with this white cake. And then um, all I did was brushed a little bit of water on top of this. And then remember this had set aside and was firming up for a little bit. And I'm just placed the um, wafer paper right on top of it. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess and set that aside to dry for a while. To be honest, you could set that aside to dry for a, even overnight. I didn't have overnight to do it. I had the, just this day to do it. But you'll get more of a crackle effect if you set it up, let it set up overnight. I'm not kidding. Overnight is fine because when it dries, when you roll it out thinner, that's where you get your crackle effect. I got an effect, but it wasn't as pronounced as it would be if it had set out for a lot longer. Now I'm just measuring out the height and the circumference of the size of my cakes because I'm going to panel this, wrap this around the cakes. So I just measured that out ahead of time so that I know exactly how big of a piece I need. Now you'll see that these pieces ended up being exactly, almost exact, one was exactly the right circumference or distance around um, the tier. But uh, when I measured, I added an extra inch to both of them and that just shows to go, yeah? <laughs> Goes to show you that you wanna add a little extra so that you have some wiggle room to cut your fondant smaller if you need to while it's on the cake. It's easier to do that than it is to try to get it to stretch to fit. And I set that, I let that sit for about a half hour again. I didn't add Tylos to this. I only did that to the, the pieces that were, were gonna be the ruffle part. But 
it is so much easier to transfer your fondant onto your cake if it has set up. Now, since you're not wrapping it around the top edge of the cake, you don't have to worry about elephant skin or tearing. You're just wrapping it around. So it only has to have that amount of flexibility in it. So don't stress out too much about that. I find that that's so much easier of a method to do than to wrap it around a rolling pin or a dowel and do it that way. Look at that. That never happens. I've said that one other time. I think I've been lucky lately. <laughs> but that typically does not happen. Now just rub your joint smooth there. And then I put it in the refrigerator and let it set up a little bit more while I worked on the ruffles. Now here you see me woman handling this fondant. And I did have to do this for a little bit. Use a, I, My arms were sore. I will be honest. My arms were a little tired by the time I had um, rolled this out to a place where I got a little bit of crackle on that top edge. Since I knew that there was going to be another ruffle on top, I didn't worry so much about underneath that top ruffled fl uh, roughly edge. And there is my little crackle that I got. Like I said, if you did it overnight or even half a day, um, you're going to get a lot more crackle than I got there, but that's okay. I did show you there that I ripped off the top edge of the cake, but you'll see I did go back and I cut that smooth. I did a, a more um, smooth cut because I changed my mind. I wanted it to have more of a soft edge instead of ripped. And then I just kind of measured around the cake. You can see that arch piece there. That is my top ruffle. I cut out that middle part because I didn't want it to get too thick sticking out from the side of the cake. And there you can see I'm just um, lining them up how I'm gonna put them on the cake. And I measured around the cake how far I wanted it to wrap around and the height I wanted it also. And I just brushed a little bit of water on here. Honestly, you could use shortening too because fondant will stick to fondant with shortening but water you have just a little bit more of a secure it sticks faster and I would say if you have some experience with fondant go ahead and use the water but if you don't or if you just don't want to mess with it take chances use your shortening because if you use shortening and you misplace your fondant or you decide that you want to move it somewhere else you can just take it right off and restick it with water you're kind of committed <laughs> and then I just once I got that piece on I just kind of Bent the edge back just a little bit. Give it a little bit of a curve. And then I'm just attaching the other pieces with water, just like I did that first piece. And just use your fondant smoother just to make sure that it's stuck on there. You, you don't even have to do that. I just find that that kind of helps work out some air bubbles that sometimes get trapped in there. And you can see that those ruffles stay in place because of the combination of the Tylos and the Wilton fondant. You could do one or the other, but I just used both. I just, just to make sure. And then this is my top tier, and this time I just used my X-Acto knife and I just cut that extra off. I wanted it to kind of have an angle, asymmetrical shape to it because I wanted that top piece to kind of be like a ruffle itself. Instead of adding more fondant on that very top, top edge, I wanted that piece to kind of mimic a ruffle as well. And then did the same technique of adding the fondant onto the side there. And I did decide to put another piece on top. Now, to get my tiers stacked on top of each other, this is a good way to find out where to place your dowels or your straws or your boba straws, whatever whatever you method you prefer. These are big um, tea straws, I think is what these are. Use your fondant or your um, cake round that's the same size as your tier that you're putting on top and do this when your fondant is softer and just push down on it and it leaves an impression and then you know exactly where your straws need to be and cut those straws flush add some buttercream and then add your top tier and I wanted to do some pearls on this one I thought that was going to be pretty for this one so I just put a little water on the on the fondant and then I'm attaching them with a combination of using my fingers and then using a dampened brush to attach them onto the dampened fondant. This was a little easier because of the angle of trying to get the best lighting on my videos. My um, window is like behind where the camera is now. 
on the right side. On the left side, I have a, a box light. But to get the natural lighting, I kind of get in my own way and cause my own <laughs> shadows with that natural light. And that is a big problem for me. Um, ignore me there. I look horrible. <laughs> so I'm trying to show you what I'm doing, but at the same time, stay out of my own way. An eternal problem that I have. So just go ahead and add those pearls wherever you want. And then here is my my edible crin crinoline. Now I will attach a link onto the video on how to make this edible crinoline. I just, I made this the day before when my family was home uh, trying to save time. So I didn't want to film while my family was home. But I do have a video that shows you how to make this and I will attach a link. This edible crinoline is awesome. And with the petals, honestly, I made those petals as an experiment for another cake. And I didn't like how they worked out for that cake. And then I added these on last minute because I thought they go went with this one. But I don't have the footage of how to make them. And another place where I will attach a link that shows you how to make um, rice paper sails. And it's basically the same technique. It is the same technique, but all you do is you cut out petal shapes before you do the rest of it. So please watch those other two videos to get the details on the edible crinoline and the rice paper petals. I'm sorry I don't have that footage, but this would be a very long video. So there you go, guys. I hope you like it, and I hope you decide to go ahead and give it a try. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.